Hey, it's Mr. Dang. Have you ever wanted to make a countdown timer? And I'm not just talking about a timer that counts down one minute uh, from 60 seconds to zero. I'm talking about a countdown timer to an event. Let's say you have an event tomorrow at 8 p.m. and you want to tell users, hey, this is the amount of seconds left before this thing actually starts. Build up that suspense. Well, that's what I'm going to be showing you in this video. If you came to this video wanting to learn about how to make a countdown timer that goes from 60 seconds to zero, you're still kind of in the right place though. We're going to be needing to understand how that one works because we're going to borrow some of the ideas from it to make our countdown to a date timer. So let's take a look at this default timer here. It's got 60 seconds, 60,000 milliseconds total. So that's the total duration. We're going to use that property later on, so keep that in mind. It also has a text property. Now this text property is simply, you can think of it as a label. What does it show here? I could show words here if I really wanted to. Test. But right now it's showing the current value of the timer. Let's take a look at what that is. So right now it's at zero. So let's play this. Let's play this app and see what happens if uh, when I start that timer. If I click it, it counts up one millisecond at a time. Let me stop that timer and make a little change to it. If I were to take the total duration of this timer, in other words, timer one dot duration, and I were to subtract the time that's currently in it, I get the time that's left. So if I were to play this timer, it's now counting down from 60,000 milliseconds to zero instead of going from zero to 60,000 milliseconds. So I pretty much have the basic part of a, a countdown timer. Now it's just a matter of showing this in the way that I want to. Milliseconds aren't really useful to us in this context. So what I'll do is I'll take the difference from subtracting that. Let me zoom in here. If I were to divide it by a thousand, I get that same number in milliseconds. Now you see 60,000 is now just 60. Let me show you what happens if I play this though. I'm going to play the app. You see it counts down, but those decimal points right there, that flicker, it's not a very pleasant experience. So to get rid of that, I can format this. But before I format this using the text property, I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take those seconds, and using the time property, I'm going to reallocate those seconds to uh, hours and minutes. So the time property helps to identify that same amount of time in hours, minutes, and seconds. Now I could apply text around it. And the text property works just like, or the text function works just like it does in Excel. I could specify how I want this time to look. Hours, colon, minutes, colon, seconds. Okay, now let me zoom out, play the app, and you'll see that if I start this timer, it's counting down one second at a time in that format that I want it to. So that's the gist of a countdown timer. We're going to be using the same structure, the same pattern to make a countdown to a date timer. The only difference is we change what we're subtracting. So let's take a look at a, a real example. Here I've started a Simple three screen app from an entity in, in the common data service, the tasks entity. I've got some tasks that a teacher might do before school starts. And I wanna find out what's the time before it gets to this task? What's the time left? So here I have 
a field, uh, uh, a label for the task itself, an expected date when to start uh, or end this task, depending on whatever uh, I want to specify here, and then this blank text where I'm going to be showing the time that gets up to that date. So let me draw a roadmap for you to help you understand where I'm going to go with this formula. There's a few different there's two different dates that I want you to be aware of, and I want you to understand the kind of terminology I'm going to be using throughout this video. First, each of those records inside that gallery with a task has a date. I'm going to call that date the target date. And that target date is going to be compared to the date right now, the time right now. I'm going to call that time now. I want to find out how much time has elapsed between now and that target date. To do that, I'll be using the date diff function. Now, Audrey has a great video that gives you a peek at some of these uh, these calendar functions and date functions that you might not have used yet. I'm going to be using the date diff function. The nice thing about it is it lets me calculate a difference between two dates, date times, but it also gives me the option of showing that difference in years, months, days, hours, minutes, or seconds. And if you're thinking like, what I'm thinking, if you want to find and show a countdown of the time before it gets to a certain event, a certain date time, you're going to want to show that countdown in seconds. So once we get a difference in, uh, in the unit of seconds, I could convert that number to show it in hours, minutes, and seconds just like a countdown timer that I'm expecting, right? I show it in the way that I want. And like the pattern that you saw in the traditional countdown timer, we're going to be using the time function and then the text function to get there. Now, one limitation of the time function is it is limited to showing hours, minutes, and seconds. So we're going to make up for that if there is a difference between dates um, in, this, in the number of days between each date, we're going to compensate for that second. I'll call that part two. I'll come back here after I show you part one. Let's take a look at our app. Before I get started, I'm going to insert a control that's a timer to get the time right now. The reason being is if you were to put the now function inside a label, it doesn't automatically update. I'm going to configure this timer so that it has a duration of one second, in other words, 1000 milliseconds. And on timer end, I want it to set a variable. So in the on timer end function uh, property, I'll have it set this variable that I'm calling time now. I'll set it to the now function, which gets the time right now. Okay, zooming out. I want this timer to repeat. I want it to auto start. Now that I have the time, I can use it in a calculation. I'll start with a simple calculation. I, like I said before, uh, I'll be using the date diff function to calculate the difference between two dates. I'm going to have the start date being that time now, comma, the end date is going to be this item 
dot, and then the uh, scheduled end time here. I could leave it at that, and by default, it'll calculate a difference in dates uh, in terms of days. But if I were to put a comma, I can actually specify the units that I want. In my case, I want my units in terms of seconds. So using the IntelliSense options, I'm going to choose seconds. I'm going to play the app and give you an idea of what this looks like right now. So this timer runs. This is the number of seconds between now and this date time. You can guess what we're going to be doing next. We need to change that amount in a more useful format. So just like we did with the first countdown timer, I'm going to start by applying the time function. I set it so that it has zero hours, zero minutes, everything else has seconds. So the time function is going to reallocate all of those seconds to minutes and hours. And then I apply the text function to format it in a way that's friendly for me to read. So I put that into hours, colon minutes, colon seconds. OK. If I were to play the app, I have somewhat of a countdown right here. I have hours, minutes, and seconds. But you'll see that August 16th is several days from now. We need to show the number of days that are different, not just the hours, minutes, and seconds. So what I'll do is I'm going to use concatenation. But before I do that, let me show you a roadmap. Jumping over to OneNote, now we're in part two. I have the hours, minutes, and seconds. I need the days. So I'm going to perform another date difference here. This time, I'm going to calculate the difference in days, but I want to output the number of days difference. And it's OK if it calculates the number of days difference, and it doesn't include half of a day. It doesn't include a quarter of a day. That amount is going to be discarded. Uh, it, it pretty much just gets you the minimum difference of days between those two dates. Any hours, minutes, and seconds that are extra, we've already account uh, accounted for it in our current formula. All right, let's jump back. I'm going to copy the part of the formula that says date diff all the way up through seconds. I'm going to apply a line here. I'll paste that in at the top. This time, instead of seconds, um, I'm going to use that same date diff function and calculate the days difference. After that, I'm going to apply a uh, put the and symbol so that I can concatenate. I want to put a colon, and then I want to put another and symbol, so it'll connect the number of days difference, a colon. And then it'll show the expression for hours, minutes, and seconds. Zooming out, uh, if I were to play the app, I look at the day, and now this is looking a lot more uh, accurate. So I have the correct number of days difference, hours, minutes, and seconds. So that's all it is. It's just that date difference function and making sure to apply it correctly to the hours, minutes, um, seconds, and then remembering to concatenate um, the number of days difference because it doesn't really fit inside that time function. So that's all there is to it.
You can make your own countdown timer to a, an event, make it bigger than what it's shown here, uh, and make your events exciting. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more interesting Power Apps, please subscribe.